I love this shit. I live this shit. And like all of us do. Like playing the drums is like, that's what we represent. You know, we could have chose other directions that made us more money and this and that, but fuck that shit. It's like we chose art. Next stop, New York City. And the precise engineering business of transferring the recorded sound from tape to a disc called the Lacquer Master. Let's look at the steps in the cutting of our Lacquer Master. Most of the sound factors are already known. The speed of the tape in recording, its playing time, and the sound level required. A special Lacquer Master disc is closely inspected. For the 12 inch long play record, the master is 16 inches in diameter. For 45 extended play records, the master is 12 inches in diameter. In both cases, the extra width allows plenty of working room in cutting. Besides a spindle for centering, the turntable has a number of holes. Through these holes, air suction holds the lacquer disc down tightly, so it is perfectly flat on the turntable. The sound dynamics of the music determine how far apart the grooves must be. Loud passages need more space between grooves. Soft passages need less. The cutting machine automatically spaces the music grooves according to the sound signal it's receiving. It all sounds so simple when you're just skimming the surface. Actually, of course, it's a painstaking and delicate operation. But in time, you have a perfect lacquer master. century, the future of mankind became uncertain. Years of vicious infighting, dwindling resources, and the viral growth of a culture dominated by greed and corruption left our world uninhabitable, our way of living unsustainable. Facing self-destruction, a classified project was conceived and developed that would seek a way to allow the very survival of our species. A desperate cry for help went out. That's the real shit. We chose the culture, we chose our art, and we made music toward the people that like, really like were at our shows, you know? And I feel that they feel that direct connection. These technicians, AK-1200, Dara, Diesel Boy, and Messinian undertook an operation to reshape and rewire the collective mindset, preparing our society for the impossible challenge that lay ahead. Over the course of the last decade, as the world around us continued to collapse, these four men discovered the existence of a tenth planet in our orbiting system. A planet that would allow us to reunite and rebuild. Now and for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, the planet of the motherfucking drums. The love of DJ has just been lost. Like people don't, they, 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 something that's like an obstacle that they fear instead of being an activity that's really fun to do. Somebody's 
nostalgic drum and bass anthems. They were made the fucking hard way. Uh, That's why everything sounds so much so different. Nowadays, a lot of the music in general just sounds homogenous and just... Because they're using each other for, for, um, for inspiration. Yeah. They're not using music from outside of their genre to be inspired by. They're not sampling music from yeah. outside their genre. It's, it's, just, kind of, it's just kind of a vicious circle. circle. Yes. Yeah. Sampling people from the 70s and the 80s yeah. and the 60s. And people now are sampling people from 2012, 2013, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's just rehashing the same generation. For a long time, just coming up as DJs, it was just a struggle. And we all kind of came up the similar type of struggle, which was, you know, playing the type of music that was never that popular, even in the beginning, in the early 90s, like the pre-jungle stuff. My issue is I don't like to call the new generation of quote-unquote DJs, they're not DJs, they're performers. Once we finally started making names for ourselves and then we eventually got to Moonshine recordings, we're doing the Moonshine tour and had CDs coming out. Even then, at, at this high point in our careers, it was still a struggle. I trust, I had muted acts before. It's all good now. We're, we're, like, we're, had, I had an act. we're compliant with sound, man. Like, we, we like to keep a good rapport. Like, I had an act literally and let us right when he was getting ready to start his last song. Click, mute the DJ. Let, let us know one more or something like that. And then we'll do I'll have, no, I'll just have the light guy. I'll have the light guy. Like I'll have the I'll have the light. Well, the monitors will go in and out. Okay. Yeah, now we know. Uh, we yeah. at no, 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 no. I'm saying when it's close, I'll, I'll cut the That's monitors right. in and out. When you cut the monitors go in and out, you'll know. Hey, worst case scenario, you could cut us off, but let him have like 30 seconds to say goodbye. The mic's live. Oh yeah, that's cool. All right. But trust me, you'll get right, some right, kind right, of cool yeah, signal. Thank you so much, bro. No problem. I appreciate it. Let's do this. Damn right. 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 AK. Right. City. Yeah. It doesn't really appeal to people that like don't think too much, that, that want to have just disposable music. For me, drum bass isn't disposable. Like, it, it's, it's just a very soulful music. So it's, it's, for me, in my opinion, it's for people that, you know, have like a really open mind to like listening to like good, deep music. I used to describe it as hip hop and twice the tempo. It's Got the spirit day. of it, at least. But it's just... Music around 175 beats per minute. But drum and bass, it, it, it's, that's the other thing about drum and bass, it's like saying guitar music because there's so many flavors of drum and bass. The DJs that inspire me for uh, technique would be like Scott Henry, Josh Wink, Richie Haw, and Terry Mullen. Um, and then as far as like uh, playing drum and bass or breakbeat or whatever, like early days was DB, Ani, and Jason Jenks were the three big guys. And they were the ones that were really pushing it. And AK-1200 as well. And that, those were kind of like the guys that were like packing the house while I was kind of like, you know, like spinning in people's basements for, you know, peanuts. So, oh. <laughs> the early days.
see these two portable radios? Well, watch this. Let her go, Betsy. Sorry, friend. You old-style portables have to go. But look at our new RCA Victor portable radio. Came through without a chip. Here's the world's first and only portable radio in the non-breakable impact case. So rugged, it's the only radio case with a five-year guarantee against chipping, cracking, or breaking in normal use. It's like, say, promoters who, who have been around for a long time, um, just to show a little respect to drum and bass cause, and acknowledge the fact that that's been around as long as they've been throwing parties. Um, and start putting more drum and bass back on the bass stages again. Or um, on the main stage. Or even on the main stage. Well, I think let's little steps. Let's get us back on the bass <laughs> stage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, there's promoters like we're saying, or there's promoters out there that love drum and bass and behind the scenes. But then you go it's to just the too parties much money. and you don't see any drum and bass on the main stage. And it's like, for me personally, if I'm, it's because of you know the corporate mindset. It's like if you like, if you really like, if I'm throwing shows and I like certain kind of music, I'll represent it. Right. And, and it's like. It's kind of like we're kind of in the hands of some of these big promoters that influence the taste of a lot of these, these new generation of kids. And it's like if they're not going to push drum and bass, it's... They're not going to get exposed to it. It's going to be a struggle. And what's yeah. fucked up is the drum and bass heads are the ones that, since they did kind of come up being the underdogs and all that, they're the most avid music lovers that they fucking know they're every the tune that's being dropped. They're fishing out. They're the ones that like... It, on some real rave essence shit, like why I started going to parties was because there was good energy around me, eclectic people that come from hip hop, rock, soul, whatever the fuck it was, techno, and they're just all coming together and teaching each other. And when there'd be a, a new wave of ravers that would come in, they'd be like dropping science on them, like letting them know about music and its history and this and that. There doesn't so much happen anymore. With the internet, of course, you can get any information you want. But you, sometimes it takes someone personally to steer, steer you there and like make, make you feel close to a scene. Like this is a culture. Drum and bass has always had a defined like like they sense of self and, and like roots and like wanting to know the music, wanting to know every bass line, every producer, every like who spit that verse on that shit, yada yada. It's like we just need people in general to be more headstrong, I think, in general for all music and aware of what's going on and how it's going to evolve and what they can do to help to make like there's a lot of great shit going on with all these festivals but if you're not doing something to contribute while you're there you pay the big ticket price you do all this nothing but love for you and you're there like raging out but if you have some kind of education and you're aware and you have your heart really set in this and like this is this is what you live and breathe for you need to educate and that's real shit like we, we need for us to evolve people need to know what happened before so it can move into the future with stronger minded people like there, there are and, and were in the drum and bass scene. When we say things like you should demand more for your money as a, as a, as a fan of, 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 of music, as, a, as a, a raver or a festival goer, when we say you should demand more for your money, it, it's not you should demand more entertainment, you should demand more visuals, you should demand more LEDs. No, you should know more about the music and the people that are making the music and the people that really really like these tunes are 400 hours on one tune you know what i mean not like five minutes you know what i mean and and and, and the passion that they have the, the most difficult crowd of people to please is a jungle crowd a drum and bass crowd because they're going to be the most cynical and the most the most critical and the first people to call you out if you didn't do well enough. And we get hated on, we get called out, we get criticized. The biggest challenge we've had is having to stay relevant in a world of all this ever-changing hype. New Year's yesterday sounded really good. It would have been good if I had a San Antonio use match. Something that we'd used for the sh tour that we did in January, those 10 dates, and then yeah, it's the same one. We always have our names in the intro though, so I figured this time we wouldn't. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can do the voice in the future, James. I will planet of the drums. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, uh.